Hi, I'm Stu from HiveMind Automation, and welcome to The Hive. In this video, we're going to be setting up HomeKit integration in our Home Assistant instance, so we can call on Siri to do things for us. HomeKit compatible accessories are fantastic, but they do come with a price premium. For example, an Eve door and window contact sensor is as much as $70 for a single sensor. And that's just one example. With Home Assistant's HomeKit bridge, we can pass through non-HomeKit compatible accessories like our Xiaomi sensors and switches with minimal fuss and without the premium price tag. So let's get started. First things first, we need to log into Home Assistant. We'll go to the configuration menu down the left hand side, click on integrations, and we'll click the plus button in the bottom right hand corner. And we'll search for HomeKit. We'll click that button. And in this instance, we'll leave auto start checked and we can change the domains that we want to include. When we're selecting domains to pass through, it's important to bear in mind that there's a limit of 150 accessories per instance, including the HomeKit bridge itself. And it's surprisingly easy to blow through that if your devices have multiple entities per device, like temperature sensors with temperature, humidity, and pressure, or smart switches that also measure the power consumption. If you've got more than 150 entities you want to pass through to HomeKit, you can create multiple bridges, so it's certainly an easy problem to solve. Once we've selected the domains that we want to pass through, we'll click Submit, and we'll click Submit again, and we want to choose where we want to place the HomeKit bridge, and I'll put this one in the office, and we'll click Finish. When the HomeKit bridge is ready, we'll get a notification in our Notification Center down the left-hand side of the Home Assistant UI. If we open up the notification center, we see this QR code, which we can use to configure HomeKit. So let's grab an iOS device and get configuring. This would be the same on an iPad. I'm using my iPhone. So on my iPhone, I'm going to open up the Home Accessory and I'm going to tap Add Accessory. And now I can use the camera on my phone to scan the QR code that we saw. So we'll do that now. There it is. And we're presented with this page that it's identified it as a bridge and we'll click on add to home. It tells us that it is an uncertified accessory and it's not certified for HomeKit and may not work reliably or securely with this iOS device. We'll tap add anyway. It's now connected to the bridge and it's got some suggested locations for us to choose. I'm going to create a new room and hit continue and I'm going to call it office and hit continue. It's got a bridge name and we can change that and we'll call this one house demo bridge and we'll hit continue and it's added to Hive Demo, and we'll hit continue again. And now it's gonna ask us about a bunch of our accessories. So uh, the Alfresco door contact sensor is connected. We'll hit continue, and we can choose the contact sensor location, and we'll go through all of these. I'll speed up the videos. Okay, so that was a bit of work to categorize all of those, uh, but now we have everything set up and we've got our home here and we can choose different rooms, for example, the lounge, and we see that we've got different things that we can turn on and off. Now, if we pop back over to our home assistant, we should be able to see when we turn something on and off. Let me find it on the screen here. When we turn something on, it affects our Home Assistant instance as well. And so now that we've got all of our accessories into HomeKit, uh, we can perform actions on them and even ask Siri to interact with them. Hey Siri, turn on the cherry blossom. Coming right up. 
And so we saw in our Home Assistant interface that the Cherry Blossom turned on. We can even set up some rudimentary automations using the Home app. For example, you can create an automation that runs when the last person leaves the house to turn off all the lights and arm the alarm system. And I'll cover creating an alarm system using Home Assistant in a future video. So make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell icon to get notified when that video comes out. We can also set up different accessories to push alerts to our door devices as well. So if a door opens during certain hours, we can get an alert. And you can also create some rudimentary scenes. My favorite is the good night scene to turn off the lights and arm the alarm in home mode. And we use that all the time. Another fantastic thing about HomeKit is the deep integration with the rest of the Apple ecosystem. For example, our car has Apple CarPlay. And since iOS 13, if you have a HomeKit compatible garage door opener, when you're in range of your home, a button will pop up in the bottom left of CarPlay to open or close the garage door. So you don't have to fumble for your garage remote. And the greatest thing about this is that my garage door opener itself isn't actually compatible with HomeKit but by setting it up in Home Assistant and having the HomeKit bridge, I gain all the functionality of a HomeKit compatible garage door opener without the price tag or even struggling to find the accessory in Australia. And whether it's even going to work with the garage door opener in my house. I can simply purchase any Home Assistant compatible device and then pass that device through HomeKit with Home Assistant and control it that way. We'll do a video on my garage door opener in a future video as well. You know what to do. Now, if you're going to use HomeKit when you're out and about, you do need something in the house that's going to act as a home hub. This can be an iPad, an Apple TV, or a HomePod. To do this, you pretty much just need to be signed into your iCloud account on the device that's going to act as your home hub. And I'll put a link to the Apple support page in the description below. The HomePod mini that Apple announced earlier this week looks like it'll be a great device for exactly this purpose. And I'll definitely be getting one in to make a video when they're available in Australia. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon so that you get an alert when that video drops. So that's integrating Home Assistant with Apple HomeKit. I hope this video has helped you out with integrating your Home Assistant setup into HomeKit so you too can control your accessories with Siri. Thanks for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation, and I'll see you next time.